He was born in 570 in the Christian era in Mecca. He descended from Abraham to Ishmael. He did miracles, prophecies, including the Quran. He confirmed the previous pre revelations and the previous prophets and what they taught. The beliefs in Islam include that Allah is one. The message is one. The book, the Quran, is one. There are six articles of faith and then five actions that we do. So we have faith and works. What's the faith? What do we believe? Well, as I said, six things. We believe in Allah. He's one. He has no partners. We believe in His angels, and they obey Allah always. They don't make any mistakes. We believe in His books, the Bible, the Gospel, the Quran. We believe in the prophets of Abraham, Jesus, and Muhammad. We believe in the day of judgment, the resurrection, and the divine decree is the sixth point, that Allah knows what will happen before it happens. Now let's break it down in one by one. Allah. We believe in Allah, that He is unique without partners, alone as creator and sustainer of all that exists. No, none can intercede with Him except by His permission. The angels, the second one that we believe in, they always obey Allah at all times. They're made from pure light. Angels include Jibril, Gabriel, Israfil, and Malcolm Moth, the angel of death. And they do not include the devil as a fallen angel. He's from another creation of Allah. He had free will. Now the books we believe in are all the books. And we'll just mention the Torah, the Old Testament, the commandments, the Psalms of David, the Injil or Evangel, Gospel, New Testament, Quran is the last of all the testaments of mankind. If you want a free Quran, by the way, you can write to us at islamdemar.com and follow the links for a free Quran. We believe in the messengers. What do we believe about them? All prophets, Adam, Noah, Abraham, Lot, Isaac, Ismael, Solomon, Jesus, Muhammad, and they brought the same message and they were very perfect in the way they delivered this. The day of judgment is the fifth come at the resurrection, the people will be brought back, and every person will be accountable for what he did. Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, atheists, all are going to be brought back and see what they did. Book of records of their good and bad deeds will be presented. Anybody did any good will see it that day. Any evil, they'll see it that day. And no one will be worrying about what the other one did on that day. No one will carry the weight of others on that day, and no one will have the right of intercession on that day except as Allah wills. The divine decree, or fate, as some people call it, it means the law already knows what's going to happen. He knew what would happen before he created. He knows the future, but we don't. His decree must happen, and it's good and evil. Allah is pure. He likes pure. He makes everything happen by his command, and no one can change their destiny except the law. There are five actions. We must say out loud that we believe in the law and His messenger. That's the testimony of faith. We have to pray five times a day, pay the charity tax, fast the month of Ramadan, and perform the pilgrimage to Mecca called Hajj. Now let's break them down and look at what they mean. The first one that we mentioned was the Shahada. And what is that? That's the bearing witness of La ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no deity to worship except God alone and that Muhammad is his messenger. Whoever says this with sincerity is considered as a Muslim and entitled to full treatment as such. Whoever dies on this belief will enter paradise, and it's light on the tongue but heavy on the scales on the Day of Judgment. The Salah is actually a ritualistic form of worship that we often call prayer, but it's distinct from anything that you have in English. It's a direct connection with Allah. It's reciting the Quran while we stand, bow, prostrate to Allah. We have du'a as something separate in prayer where we supplicate. Du'a or supplication can be made in the Salat. But the Salat is something inside, outside, any place you go. Where the Imam is the leader. And by the way, we have no priests or hierarchy like bishops or popes in Islam. The zakah is the purdu or charity tax for the needy and the orphans. And this is not based on income. It's based on your net worth. And for the wealthy, they pay 
percent of what they have to the poor every year. There is no income tax. By the way, this is a very important principle of Islam and helps build the society. Ramadan. This is the fasting. The month of Ramadan is mentioned in the Quran. We're told to fast just as people below, before us were ordered to fast. And this means to stay away from food, drinks, and marital relations during daylight hours. If somebody's traveling or sick or have other problems, then they're excused and there's a way to make it up. The Hajj or the pilgrimage to Mecca is something that's incumbent on every single Muslim to do once in their life when Allah makes a way for them and they're physically able to do it. These are the rituals actually that came from Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. And the Hajj begins in the 12th month of the lunar calendar and uh, as many as two and a half to three million people at a time gather for that every year. I want to talk about some concepts in Islam. I want to talk about truth and justice these are words thrown around a lot, by the way. And equality. Truth, justice, and equality. And finally, patience. And I hope everybody here has got patience while they listen to me narrate this thing. The truth. What do we know about truth? We've been told in the Quran, always speak a word that is true. Kulu kalim sabida. And the prophet, peace be upon him, said, a liar is not from us. He's not a believer. So that's an important aspect of Islam. If you want to lie, you've got to find another religion. Don't worry, there's plenty out there. Justice. Oh, believers, stand firm for justice. That went too fast for me. It's in the Quran. You can read it later. Even if it's against yourself or your family. Equality in Islam this is in the 49th chapter of the Quran. Oh, mankind, Allah has created you from a single man and a female and set you up as nations and tribes made you different so you recognize each other the noblest among you with Allah is the one who performs his duty God fearing and barely Allah is all knowing and aware of what you do chapter 49 verse 13 it's called circle hijrah here we go patience also steadfast surely Allah is with the patient that's in the Quran in Allah Ma'asabun. Successful are those who encourage each other to be steadfast and patient. Circle Asim. The Prophet, peace be upon him, gave advice to someone one time. He said, Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. That's the only advice he gave him, too, by the way. <laughs> Good advice. I want to talk now about rights in Islam. The rights of the family. Now, by the way, there's more rights than this. I'm picking out the ones that people like to talk about right now. Rights of family, rights of neighbors, the rights of the community, the rights of other humans, the rights of animals, and the rights of plants. All right, think about it. We've got people out there today who think they come up with something new. Conservationists. We don't know 1,400 years ago. There was somebody calling for this long before the buffalo were even being destroyed by certain white groups. I'm white, I can say that. Family. It's the foundation of society. That makes sense. Without a family, how are you going to get any people? Family stability promotes peace and security. Parents and grandparents are the most respected. Now think about this. And that's after the belief, of course, in Allah. And marriage is taught to us to be at least half of our religion. Get married, boy. And having children is highly encouraged. 